interest rates, interest rates, interest rates. So everybody wants to talk about interest rates right now. And that's the theme for the market update report this month is how are interest rates affecting the real estate market? So I'm going to get right into it. We're going to go over again. This is a big picture market update. We're going to touch on a little bit of local stats, but real estate is hyper local. I mean, down to the neighborhood, down to the street local. Well, you may see, and I'll show you some of the data behind this, that you'll have areas of the country that are going to appreciate over the next couple of years, and you're going to have areas of the country that are going to depreciate over the next couple of years. And right now we're going to be talking about averages. Um, so I've got a slideshow right here, how are interest rates affecting the market. I'm going to start it off with a quote from Mark Fleming, chief economist of First American Bank. Uh, when the economy, when the economic uncertainty dust settles, those buyers and sellers who were on the sideline will jump back in the housing game. Demographic trends support elevated purchase demand in the years to come. So it's a question of when, not if, for the housing market. And <clears throat> so let's break this down. Right now, uncertainty is everywhere, right? And people are just like, I don't know. Interest rates are so high. I don't remember the last time this was high. So I'm just going to wait, right? Uncertainty um, is the name of the game right now. But the demographic trends support elevated purchase demand in the years to come. Right. And what that means, I'll show you a little bit later on, is that the big picture is that demand is not going to change for a long time. People are going to want to move. They're going to need to buy. They're going to need to sell. Um, and that's not changing right over the next decade. Um, so the basic laws of supply and demand are at play here. And those tell us that these temporary changes we're feeling due to the manipulation of interest rates are just that they're temporary. Um, so you see tons of headlines out there right now. And, and right now, I feel like, and I've always said this, that um, the greatest value that we can provide to our clients is certainty, right? Is when there are uncertain times uh, in the market that people don't know what to do, we can provide you a clear path forward with specific data and insights and in our experience so that you can use that to make informed decisions in a very certain manner. Uh, we haven't needed all of this certainty in a while, you know, because the last two years, the only thing anybody worried about was how do I get the most possible price for my home and how do I get my offer accepted competing against dozens of other offers? The times have changed a little bit and people are uncertain and we're helping to provide that certainty in our marketplace. So the big question right now for a lot of people is, will mortgage rates keep rising? Um, and I think the short term answer is that uh, interest rates have risen pretty dramatically over the last few years. That dramatic rise is done. We may see them tick up slowly a little bit more through the end of the year, first quarter next year. But all the data that I see uh, shows that interest rates are going to start coming back down again in 2023. Um, so you've got tons of headlines out there. A lot of this is driving a lot of the uncertainty in the marketplace. Um, but here's another quote from Deputy Chief Economist for First American, Odetta Kushi. Uh, the aim of Fed tightening the Federal Reserve manipulating interest rates is to curtail demand in an effort to tame inflation. And when it comes to the housing market, the Fed's actions are working, right? Let's stop there. So the Fed wants to slow down inflation in relation to the housing market. The extreme gains in equity, which we'll talk about later, um, it is working, right? They are slowing down the housing market because that's what they want to do. Home sales, both new and existing, are falling. Builders have cut back production in response to rapidly declining affordability, and annual house price growth has slowed from the peak of nearly 21% in March of this year to 16.7% in July, right? So um, the Fed wants to slow down the housing market, it is working. The question that we need to answer and that we need to ask ourselves is once they've accomplished what they've set out to do and they've slowed down the housing market to a, the point in which they want to slow it down to, what happens next, right? What will they do after that? And that's how we can forecast what's gonna happen in 2023. So here's a little picture of the mortgage rates and what they've done over the past year is in January, they're all the way down at an average of 3.22%. They had a pretty steep rise in the March to April timeframe, much like the rise we're experiencing now. Um, if you're worried about a crash, here's an indicator, right? When they rose really steeply like this in March or April, 
the real estate market hasn't crashed. We can look back six months and see that although it has slowed down, which is what they intended, it has not crashed. We haven't seen, you know, uh, houses selling for drastically undervalued. We haven't seen distressed property sales. Those are at the lowest rates in over a decade. Um, so although the housing or the interest rates have risen dramatically, we have not crashed yet. We don't foresee a crash coming. Um, here's some of the local data, right? That, and this is some of the lagging indicators, some of the stuff that trails behind in information. On the next slide, I'm going to show you a couple of leading indicators that will tell you that, like, um, although it hasn't affected us a, a great deal here yet, it, it, it is something to keep an eye on that the Fed wants to cause some pain in the housing market to slow things down. And that pain is something that we'll probably see here in the next few months on our local real estate market. Um, so you can see that median sales prices have ticked up since January 2019. This is very much a you know upward trend all the way across, all the way through September of this year, right? Just as, as recent as last month, that housing prices continue to increase. Also, the months of supply available, which is the demand, right? Uh, I mean, sorry, so the supply effectively, uh, directly affects the pricing has remained pretty consistent outside of some seasonal spikes, which we see every year in terms of, you know, going into the spring and summer. Um, it stayed between zero and two months of inventory this entire time. And, and that's no change right now. As far as some leading indicators to keep an eye on we can look at this right here that the amount of new listings to hit the market again seasonally you know increasing through the spring and summer and then seasonally decreasing through fall and winter of 2021 this happened again in 2022 and it's starting to happen again right now going into fall right that seasonally we see a decrease in the amount of le listings so none of this is alarming this is all pretty in line with our normal trends in a normal market that the amount of listings available has decreased at a gradual pace as we come out of summer um, the under contract sales the amount of sales in the marketplace also typically spring and summer increases decreases in the fall and winter in, and that has continued in 2022. But the difference right now, just in this last month, um, you know, the amount of sales that happened in Sanford and Lillington dropped by about 40 percent, the un under contract sales. So this isn't going to pop up on your housing values yet. This isn't going to pop up on most of the reports yet. But this is data on how many houses went under contract last month. And they're closing in October. So the closed numbers aren't out for October until next month. But we get an indicator here that the amount of houses that went under contract, although the amount of listings stayed relatively constant, the amount of houses that went under contract went from about 110 in Sanford and um, 40 in Lillington down to 68 and 27, about a, a roughly 40 percent drop across the two areas. Um, so the amount of houses that went under contract fell drastically while the amount of homes that hit the market remained pretty constant. What that tells us is that the months of supply available on the market is likely to show an increase when the end of month October numbers come out, right? These are leading indicators. And when we do our November market update, my prediction is that we'll see a um, pretty decent size increase in the amount of inventory and supply on the market, which directly affects the supply and demand principle right so um so all that's leading up to what's ahead for home prices right first let's talk about what the experts are saying um david dave ramsey personal finance personality a lot of you guys know dave ramsey the root issue of what drives house prices almost always is supply and demand this is the root issue of what usually drives most prices now in the short term the federal reserve can manipulate supply and demand with interest rates, right? And that's what we're seeing right now. But let's talk a little bit about supply and demand on a broader scale and what's generally driving supply and demand. Um, Mark Fleming, while the market's considered overvalued, uh, may need to adjust to the not so new reality of higher mortgage rates, housing market fundamentals still support a moderation of annualized house price appreciation rather than a sharp decline. Um, what that's saying is, is that although there are markets that are way overpriced, right, there are markets where 200 grand over asking was normal the last two years, uh, and those may need to adjust, right, we may see a decline there, that the fundamentals behind the market, 
the supply and demand fundamentals support a moderation of annualized house price appreciation, right? So let's talk about that. We're not at risk of a collapse today in the financial system like we were before. It's true. Housing may be a little frothy, so housing prices may come down or they may plateau, but not to the extent that it happened in 2008. And this is hedge fund manager John Paulson, who was one of the leading predictors of the 2008 crash before it happened. Um, so let's look at this, right? This is year over year comparisons between the amount of showings um, per listing and the amount of active listings. So there are less buyers looking because they're uncertain, they're worried about interest rates, and there are more active listings on the market, right? This is supply and demand um, fundamentals. The amount of inventory change in the market, though, is not that significant, right? It really has not gone up much yet. I showed you some leading indicators that say we need to keep an eye on it. But in North Carolina, we've only seen about a 3.3% increase in inventory, really a very moderate amount. So they are slowing down the housing market, but at a moderate pace. It's not a crash. It's not even a, a big correction. It's a moderate change in the amount of inventory. Um, and so what's driving supply right now, right? And the, the temporary manipulation, I'm sorry, what's driving demand and the temporary manipulation of this demand is interest rates. And right now, interest rates have seen a steep increase, right? Uh, it, from 20, the beginning of 2021 to 2022. Uh, and it's expected to peak in 2023 and then start to come back down again, right? Here are the, you know, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Mortgage Banker Association, uh, National Association of Realtors all put out predictions on where mortgage rates are headed through the fourth quarter of 2023. Um, and you can see that they're all pretty much in line with each other. Um, and the average of all four is expected that interest rates in 2023 come back down to around 5.4 to 5.68 percent right which is a big decrease from where we are currently and this is you know uh, an average so your government backed loans va fha usda of which we see a lot of here in our market um typically have interest rates that are lower than this right so let's talk about the demand right and the big fundamentals behind demand uh us population age in 2021 right the millennial generation those aged 25 to 40 currently is the largest uh demographic population segment in america right now we have the baby boomers we have gen x and then we have the gen y um sorry gen y the millennial generation uh currently composes the largest segment of our population and they're entering their prime buying years, right? This is the age 25 to 40 where most people buy their first house. It's also the age where most people buy their second house. They sell the first house and they upgrade. Um, so this age group is basically telling us that demand is going to remain very strong. It's going to increase actually, because not only are we having the largest segment of the population entering their prime buying years, but we have this trend as well, where uh, this is the amount of single family starts by decade, the amount of single family new construction homes that were started and completed uh, by the decade. So you can see here um, that we have over 8,000 housing or sorry, 8 million housing starts in the 60s. We have, you know, over 11 million in the 70s, 9 million, almost 10 million in the 80s, right around that 10 million to 12 million mark for these decades. And then in the 2010, uh, decade from 2010 to 2020 it was only a little over 6000 right uh, or 6 million sorry uh so what that tells us is that less houses were built during the 2010 to 2020 era and that means less houses are available which coincides with a time when we're going to need more houses than ever because the largest segment of the population is entering their prime buying gears. So increased demand by demographic trends, followed by decreased supply because we didn't build enough houses after the crash in 2008 for the next decade, leads us to say that the fundamentals behind housing, the housing market, the supply and demand fundamentals are going to remain really strong for the foreseeable future. So 
all that, what's the summary, right? What are people expecting in terms of appreciation, right? The home price forecast for 2023, uh, average of six forecasts between Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Mortgage Banker Association, the um, home price uh, expert survey, uh, and the National Association of Realtors, along with Ivy Zellman, uh, five of the six predict an increase, right? A moderate increase in home prices in 2023. We have one moderate decrease. Uh, let's dive in a little bit deeper. So this takes a look at the different market um, service areas, right? These are the big, or sorry, metropolitan service areas, the big major metros across the country. 618 uh, of the uh, roughly 880 uh market or metropolitan service areas in the country are forecasted for uh, appreciation right over the 2023 year you know through next year um moderate appreciation right most of these between you know a, a, a less than one percent appreciation up to a five percent appreciation so we don't expect big increases in home prices anymore but we also aren't expecting on a large scale decreases because even for the 257 of these metro areas only 30 of those 257 were greater than a 3% depreciation, right? So um, again, like I said before, some markets are going to appreciate, some are going to de depreciate. Here, hyper-locally, we have so many new jobs coming in, so many people moving to the Triangle area and to um, the surrounding areas that, you know, I feel we're going to be in this green area and not in the red, right? Because real estate is hyper-local. So um, also, you know, the home price expectation survey uh, panels, 100 different analysts, the top analysts in the country. Um, and this is a summary of what they predict. The 100 top analysts in the country predict that, you know, we're going to see appreciation, not depreciation. These numbers here, a whole lot more of these experts, you know, uh, expect appreciation. And even of those experts that expect the home prices to depreciate, none of them are drastic depreciations, right? We have, uh, you know, two out of 100 who predict a greater than 10% depreciation. The rest of them are between zero and 10%. And again, hyper local, right? Some markets are going to depreciate while others appreciate. So um, again, one more graph showing you through 2026, right, that the majority of those panelists forecasted expect continued appreciation. So if you're somebody who's sitting back waiting, I'm going to wait to buy until home prices drop. I think you're going to be waiting for quite a while. Uh, and that brings us to the next thing is, you know, right now, equity is the shining star of the housing market. So equity right now is the silver lining between behind you know a housing market that has somewhat hit its peak you know and is now plateauing or in some areas you know even going down a little bit it's one of those things where you have to have some perspective right if you you know invested in a fine piece of art for a thousand dollars and over the last couple of years it has risen and gained value and it's not worth five thousand dollars you're pretty happy right and next month if that piece of art drops to four thousand dollars in value you may feel a little bit sad about it but with perspective you can look back and see that for a couple of years ago you only bought it for a thousand dollars and you still experienced a 400 percent gain on your investment we have to have perspective right that the even if the housing market depreciates in the short term it has appreciated so much over the last few years that everybody you know just about is sitting on record amounts of equity so Another quote from Odetta Kushi here, U.S. households own $41 trillion in owner-occupied real estate, just over $12 trillion in debt, and the remaining $29 trillion in equity. The national loan-to-value in the second quarter of 2022 was 29.5%, the lowest since 1983. Homeowners had an average of $320,000 in inflation-adjusted equity in their homes in quarter two 2022, an all-time high. Homeowners are sitting on more equity than they have been in a long time across the board. For many households, home equity is the only source of wealth creation, the only source. So for many households, the only way they're building wealth is their home, right? They don't have significant money in retirement accounts. They don't have significant money in other investments. For many, many households, your home is the only investment they're making in wealth creation. 
As a result, recent record gains in equity and record declines in loan-to-value ratios will provide many owners with a financial buffer in case economic conditions worsen. In addition, record equity continues to provide fuel for housing demand, particularly if households are relocating to more affordable areas. So um, homeowner equity gains year over year, quarter to 2022. So this is year over year um, from 2021 to 2022. Seventy thousand dollars in North Carolina. The average home gained seventy thousand in equity in one year, right? So again, perspective, right? Even if we saw a three percent decline, and everybody wants to get a little sad about that, you gained over seventy thousand dollars on average in equity just from last year, right? Not to mention what the gains were from for somebody who's owned their house for a decade or two decades. Uh, and so here's a change in home prices since quarter one, nineteen ninety one is that home prices since 1991 are up almost 300% on average, you know, from 1991, right? So if you're in, somebody who's owned your house for a long time and is thinking about downsizing, you've done really, really well over the last decade or two, right? Or three. Um, you've done really, really well in terms of your investment in your home, and you can capitalize on that right now. On top of that, right, one of the biggest disasters or crises right now in the real estate market is rent, right? Rent prices have increased astronomically, just like home prices have. And there's a saying that you're going to pay off a mortgage. It's a matter of whether you're going to pay off your mortgage or you're going to pay off someone else's mortgage. If you rent, you are making a mortgage payment. It's just a matter of if you're making someone else's mortgage payment or you're making your own. And rent prices have increased astronomically over the last few years. Since home, you know, homes as an investment, your, your home is likely, you know, for many people, the only source of wealth creation. It's no wonder that the average net worth of a homeowner is 40 times greater than that of a renter. And I expect that difference to increase over the next few years, increase, you know, because uh, those that choose to rent and choose to wait and choose not to get into the housing market are just going to continue to see increased renting rent amounts uh, and all that money that they're spending on rent that could be going towards building equity in, you know, one of the biggest investments in their financial planning uh, is going to be, you know, wasted, you know, essentially, uh, and they're not going to be capitalizing on the appreciation expected over the next few years. So again, just to kind of bring everything back into perspective back, you know, and in, 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 in this and close this out is that we have huge gains in the amount of equity over the last 20 years, huge gains in just the last year, right? That equity right now is what we should be focusing on more so than short term, changes in the real estate market. If you're thinking about selling right now and you're wondering whether it is the right time to sell um, or you should wait, you know, it really comes down to do you want to move, right? And if you want to move, we shouldn't let these short term changes in the real estate market affect that decision because you have record amounts of equity that you can cash in right now and capitalize on. And there are opportunities available to you in the market because of the temporary decrease in demand, Infl emphasis on temporary, because like we said in one of the first slides that I'll go back to here is, you know, that uh, the aim of the Fed tightening is to curtail demand in an effort to tame inflation, right? And that it, and, and when they accomplish that, right, because it is working right now, buyers are going to come back into the market, right? And the market is going to shift back towards more balance or even back in the seller's favor pretty considerably. And if you wait to buy because of that, whether you're a renter or whether you're looking at someone who's looking to uh, downsize or upsize your home, then you're going to have waited too late and you're going to be jumping back in the market when everyone else is jumping back in the market. So, Hopefully you found this helpful, right? I wanted to try to answer how interest rates are affecting the real estate market. If you have any questions or comments or some feedback on this, 
put them in the comment section on whatever platform you're watching this on. We'll come back and answer those things. We'll probably do some content around those things. Uh, if you want to stay updated with what's going on in our local market, in our local community, make sure you hit the subscribe button. You know, hit the little notification bell so you get notifications when we put out videos. Uh, and as always, right, if you're looking to buy or sell a house, we would love the opportunity to earn your business. I'm Walter Susevich, Sanford Surrounded, who helps you with your home matters.